great to have this opportunity to be with you. And uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to be doing is um, I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, prayer because we're going through this unit uh, and at ch in church uh, called Closer about two-way communication between us and God. And so that two-way communication is primarily prayer. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to be having some short uh, messages on, on Thursdays. And the idea behind these is that we kind of really want to have um, a time of to kind of incite discussion. Uh, so the idea isn't just that one of us will be talking, but hopefully it'll kind of bring forth discussion. And I really hope that that's what this will do today. So what I'm going to do is, um, prayer, prayer is a very practical thing. So I'm going to be talking about um, just kind of my uh, individual journey with prayer, so kind of my testimony as it re relates to my prayer life. And I by no means am an expert in prayer, um, but I'm just going to share kind of some of the things that I have uh, found that kind of work for me in my prayer life and in my relationship with God. Um, and I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm no me, by no means an expert, so I'm really hoping to get feedback from you, you folks as well to get a better understanding of, of what works for other people. So we really kind of want to create a dialogue here, an interaction where we can talk about our own experiences and then we can also hear from people out there um, about what their experiences are and what they find uh, work for them. So just to kind of give you a, a start, a basic kind of introduction to, um, to my background, um, I grew up in a Christian home um, with Christian parents and you know I was very blessed in that regard and uh, kind of from early on I, I believed in God um, I would pray to God occasionally um, growing up um, I mean my, my family would pray to him regularly but myself personally I would pray to him occasionally usually, usually when I wanted something or usually if I was kind of doubting my salvation or if I was trying to um, you know pray to be saved um, or if for some reason I was emotionally down, I might talk to God. But I didn't have like a real steady, steady, um, consistent, like devotional time. Um, and then in high school, I was involved in a, a very active youth group that did uh, mission trips, short-term mission trips in the summer. And so I went on those short-term mission trips uh, each summer that I was involved in the youth group. And um, in 1989, I took a trip to, to Haiti. So this is between my sophomore and junior year of, of high school. And uh, when we would go on these trips, we would uh, have a, you know, a, usually a 30 minute period of devotional each day and we would read some sort of devotional guide or we would just read scripture and we'd spend time in prayer as well. And after that, that trip, I really was inspired uh, to set, a set aside time to God each day uh, to have, um, this kind of focused devotional time each day. And so uh, the rest of that summer and going into my junior year of high school, um, I started doing that. I started having a consistent devotional time. And so it started off um, where I was probably spending most of the time reading the Bible. Um, and then maybe um, I would have like, you know, maybe 15 minutes tops that I would spend in prayer. And then as time went on, I began increasing the time that I, I spent in prayer. Uh, so it was longer and longer. Um, but one thing that I found, and, and one thing that I kind of struggled with, was that um, I had trouble kind of maintaining my focus. Like if I if I went into praying, um, I would I would oftentimes get distracted um, if I didn't have some sort of game plan, if I didn't have some sort of idea of, of what I was going to pray about. If I just went out, okay, um, I'm going to start praying and. Um, uh, just kind of pray about whatever came into my mind, I would find that my mind wandered and I was, I was distracted. Um, and my, my youth pastor at the time, who's, who's still a really good friend of mine, Paul Gleiman, he, uh, one of the things that he would recommend to us in, in the youth group was, you know, if you're thinking about praying, um, there, you know, there's different things you can pray about. And one of his suggestions was to pray through the armor of God. So in Ephesians uh, it talks about the armor of God, putting on the armor of God. And so I started incorporating putting on the full armor of God into my prayer life. So for example, I would, um, 
I would think about putting on the helmet of salvation. So I would imagine myself putting on the helmet of salvation, and I would think about what is putting on the helmet of salvation with our hope being in salvation. What does that mean? And so I would uh, think about my mind and think about um, things that I didn't want to fill my mind and, and pray that I would release those to God, uh, give those up, things like fear and anxiety and negativity and depression and uh, anger and bitterness and things like that. So I would release those to God and at the same time I would pray to receive from God what, what he wanted me to think about, that I would think about what was pure and holy and righteous. I would also envision myself putting on the breastplate of righteousness and confess my sins before God and thank God for his salvation and the work that he did for us on the cross. And I would <clears throat> envision um, just what it meant for him to cleanse us uh, from our sins and impurities and iniquities and, and release all my, my sins, confess all my sins to him. And then also um, just think about his sanctification process of setting us apart and his regeneration process of transforming us into his image. I would put, my, put on the belt of truth, so I would pray for um, having knowledge and wisdom and, and understanding of reality, of truth, of what, what's really going on, and not being deceived by the devil's lies and schemes or the lies and schemes of this world. So I would pray that I would, I would put that on and receive that from God. Uh, and I pray that I could put on the, the shoes of readiness that comes from the gospel of peace so that I'd be ready to go out and serve God in any way with my finances, with my gifts and talents, with whatever he equipped me with in, uh, in whatever situations he brought into my life that I could serve him uh, and be ready, willing, and able to serve him. I would pray that I would be able to take up the shield of faith and be able to defend myself with a firm, steady faith against the fiery attacks from the enemy. And I would pray that I would be able to take the sword of the Spirit and um, just really be empowered with, with God's Spirit, be filled with His Holy Spirit, and be filled with the knowledge of His Word so that I could use that uh, uh, against the enemy. Uh, and also... Um, I began around this time also kind of praying, well, eventually I began praying uh, that I would have also the fruits of the Spirit. And one thing that I, I read around this uh, uh, when I was in college was a book called A Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. And in that book, he talks about uh, all these different Christian disciplines, um, meditation, uh, prayer, worship, praying, fasting, um, all sorts of different things, solitude, silence, all, all sorts of types of things, both corporate and, and uh, individual disciplines. And really kind of the theme of his book overall was that by practicing these disciplines, it doesn't earn you salvation and it doesn't make God love you anymore. But what it does is that it puts you in a place where you can receive God's grace. So it puts you in a position, in a posture, where you are able to receive what God wants to give you. And one of the ones that really struck me was his talk on meditation. So uh, what he talked about in regards to meditation was that um, just to kind of, as you, as you uh, are, are thinking about receiving something from God, inhale and, and just kind of envision yourself receiving that from God and as you um, and then as you exhale release whatever it is you want to give over to God so for example if you're praying for courage that you would inhale and receive that courage from God and that you would exhale fear or anxiety and that you would breathe that out and release that and so I started practicing that um, so I would pray as I would pray to God I would just as I would inhale things that I wanted to um, him to give to me and then exhale the things that I wanted to release to him for him to take away and so I started praying that with the fruits of the spirit as well so I would envision myself receiving from God the fruits of the spirit for example love and I would inhale as I was envisioning myself receiving love from God and I would exhale 
as I would think about being equipped to love those around me. I would inhale as I would receive God's joy. And I would exhale thinking about expressing that joy to others around me. I would inhale receiving his peace. And then exhale being able to express that peace to those around me. So something that I began incorporating more recently is that I've begun praying through, uh, through, through the body, through my body parts, and I would submit those to God. So for example, I would, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think about my mind and pray about my mind and pray that I use my mind to glorify God, that he fills me with the thoughts that he wants me to think, that all the thoughts that I think would be glorifying and pleasing to, to him, and that he would fill me with knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the times and the situations and the truth and reality around me. And so I would pray for that. I'd pray for my, you know, for my eyes, that I would use my eyes to glorify him, that I would look at things that glorify God, that I would appreciate his beauty in this world around us, and that I would uh, be able to give thanks to him for this beauty, and that I would be able to uh, see things clearly and as they really are, and that I would be able to glorify him with my ears, that I would be quick to listen and slow to speak, and that I would be able to listen and be able to discern God's voice and what he's trying to speak to me and I would pray for uh, that I would honor him with my mouth and be able to speak words of encouragement and words that uplift and help people and um, and that I would be able to speak his truth and speak the message of his gospel and so I'd pray through my whole body like this so I've begun doing that more recently so I kind of alternate uh, between days between praying for the the armor of God putting on the armor of God and then praying that I will glorify God with each each and every part of my body um, but I'm you know I'm I'm looking for for other ways too and I'm, I'm hoping that other people can offer their suggestions I know my wife um, she has a really good prayer prayer life and she um, she'll oftentimes write out her prayers and I know that that works for other people who also might be distracted when they pray because a lot of times I know I'll, I'll go out and I'll pray um, and when I'm praying, if, if I don't have a game plan, if I just kind of like free form it, so to speak, a lot of times I'll find that I'm just distracted and my mind wanders. And so I think really having this kind of focused prayer time really helps me, um, this kind of structure, structured format of prayer really helps me maintain the focus. But the drawback is, is that it can kind of become ritualistic or formulaic where I feel like I'm always praying the same thing all the time. And so it doesn't quite mean as much. Um, and so that's one thing that, that I'm kind of, I struggle with at times. And so I'd like kind of other ideas of what other people do in their prayer lives. Um, uh, and maybe I can kind of incorporate that into mine as well. And also, <clears throat> growing up, one thing that I uh, kind of realized uh, as I was, you know, kind of just thinking about prayer and kind of, at times struggling with prayer is just this idea of, of why we pray and probably most people have, have probably thought about it before we talked about it a couple weeks ago in pastor rick's message where he talked about um he talked about jesus and what jesus was saying about prayer in matthew and one of the things that jesus brought up was that you know not to use a lot of a lot of words and eloquent speech that that doesn't impress god that god already knows before you even ask what you're going to pray, pray about. So God knows, before I pray about it, that I'm going to pray. He knows what I need better than I know myself. And he knows what I'm going to pray about. And so, like many folks, I have began thinking about why do we pray? What are the reasons we pray? And, of course, God knows what we need before we even ask him. Uh, but the primary reason why we pray is I believe because of relationship it's about a relationship with God and this is really unfathomable to me I, I, I can't even really believe it but the, the creator of the cosmos the God of the cosmos who stands outside of time and space for some inexplicable reason wants to have a relationship with me right here and right now and I can't quite comprehend that I can't wrap my mind around that fully but that is the truth. That is the reality. He wants a relationship with me. He desires it. And so I should desire to have a relationship with him as well. And uh, 
C.S. Lewis in his uh, in his book Mere Christianity, he he talks about an interesting thing in relation to prayer, and he's he's really talking about the Trinity, but he's talking about how uh, when we enter into prayer, we actually experience the dynamic of the Trinity in our prayers, and we actually enter into the the trinity we kind of almost become like a fourth participant in the triune nature of god so we're relating to god the father god the son jesus and the holy spirit all the while we are praying and so i just wanted to read you a quote from your christianity from c.s lewis that's about this <clears throat> so he says you may ask if we cannot imagine a three personal being what is the good of talking about him? Well, there isn't any good talking about him. The thing that matters is being actually drawn into that three personal life. And that may begin any time, tonight, if you like. What I mean is this. An ordinary simple Christian kneels down to say his prayers. He is trying to get in touch with God. But if he is a Christian, he knows that what is prompting him to pray is also God. God, so to speak, inside him. But he also knows that all his real knowledge of God comes through Christ, the man who was God. That Christ is standing beside him, helping him to pray, praying for him. You see what is happening? God is the thing to which he is praying, the goal he is trying to reach. God is also the thing inside him which is pushing him on, the motive power. God is also the road or the bridge along which he is being pushed to that goal. So that the whole threefold life of the three personal being is actually going on in that ordinary, ordinary little bedroom where an ordinary man is saying his prayers. The man is being caught up into the higher kinds of life, what I call Zoe, or spiritual life. He is being pulled into God, by God, while still remaining himself. And I just find that such an interesting thought, that dynamic there, of when we are praying, God is inciting us to pray. He's inspiring us to pray. So he's working through us while we pray. The Spirit is leading and moving us and moving through our prayers as we're reaching out to God. And oftentimes what we're thinking about is Jesus, the second member of the Trinity, we're, because he is the most tangible expression of God that we, can, that we can comprehend because he was actually in human form, in human flesh. And so he gives us something that we can relate to, that we can think about. And so there's that dynamic of the Trinity, this perfect relationship of the Godhead. God is one, but he has three persons in some unfathomable, incomprehensible way. And when we pray, when we enter into relationship with God, in some mysterious way we enter into the dynamic of that 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 triune nature of god we enter into the trinity even though we don't comprehend it and maybe a lot of times we don't even feel it we are being and we are entering into it we are being drawn and pulled in by god as we ourselves are reaching out to god and talking about god and thinking about him and relating to him a second reason we pray is that it allows us to be to express our gratitude I think one of the most tragic things about atheists is that they have really when you think about it no one to be grateful to for this universe for this cosmos through the for the beauty of nature for our very existence there's no one to express gratitude for and in prayer we have an opportunity to give thanks to God one of the reasons why I think God wants us to ask him for things is because it also gives us an opportunity to acknowledge our gratitude when he answers our prayers, when he provides us with things. If we go through life with never asking for something, a lot of times we don't even realize what we have to be thankful for. But when you actually take the time to ask for something and then you see that you receive it, it gives you an opportunity I think in a real way to be thankful to God. And so that's another reason why I think it's important to pray. Um, another reason why is that I think that it helps us reformulate what our perspective is in relation to God. 
that we are utterly dependent on him, that we need him for all things. So it gives us a, a chance to realize that we actually need God. We need something outside of ourselves. We're not self-sufficient. We're dependent on God. We need him in some way. And then I think a, a fourth reason that we pray that it's prayer is, is necessary and that we pray is that it really helps us to reorientate our outlook from the way that we look at things to the way that God wants us to see things and God wants us to look at things. I want to read something from uh, probably my favorite current Christian author, author Philip Yancey. He has this book about prayer. Uh, I would recommend it. It's called Prayer Doesn't Make Any Difference. It's a really good book. And I want to read a quote from it that I found particularly interesting. <clears throat> so he says, Why pray? I have asked this question almost every day of my Christian life, especially when God's presence seems far away and I wonder if prayer is a pious form of talking to myself. I have asked it when I read theology, wondering what use there may be in repeating what God must surely know. My conclusions will unfold only gradually, but I begin here because prayer has become for me much more than a shopping list of requests to present to God. It has become a realignment of everything. I pray to restore the truth of the universe, to gain a glimpse of the world, and for me, through the eyes of God. In prayer, I shift my point of view from away from my own selfishness. I cl climb above timberline and look down at the speck that is myself. I gaze at the stars and recall what role I or any of us play in a universe beyond comprehension. Prayer is the act of seeing reality from God's point of view. So I think that prayer, a powerful aspect of prayer, is that it really helps us realign our perspective to how God wants us to view things. It helps us to kind of put ourselves in a position where we kind of get out of ourselves and get to where God wants us to be, at least closer to it. We can't reach there fully in this lifetime, but prayer is probably the mechanism, one of the mechanisms that helps us do that most, realign our outlook and our perspective with God. So like I mentioned, I'm not an expert in prayer. I have my own struggles and things that I would like help with as well. So I'm hopeful that some of you out there might have some suggestions. You can share your struggles as well. And hopefully together we can talk about also suggestions, things that we can help help each other out with. One of the things is that, that I struggle with is setting aside time. Now I'm blessed where I have a job where I can walk outside a lot. And um, one of the things I most enjoy uh, as far as prayer is being able to walk while I pray. I like to be able to walk outside in nature or walk around my neighborhood or something like that and be able to pray. And so when I have opportunities at my job to just be able to walk around a lot, I try to incorporate prayer into that. But when I don't have those opportunities, I struggle at other times to kind of fit prayer into my life. I used to have a job where I drove a lot. Uh, had to, my commute was 50 miles each way, and so I would spend the time in the morning on my way to work. I would spend that in prayer. But I don't have a, a long commute now, um, so uh, I have to find other, other times to have kind of a focused and consistent prayer life. Another thing that I mentioned already is that I struggle with maintaining focus. And so because of that, I've kind of developed, I've kind of worked with these um, kind of structured prayers that help me. But a, another problem that kind of feet, bounces off of that is that then my prayers can kind of become repetitive and formulaic because I'm, I'm oftentimes praying the same thing or very similar things uh, all the time. And so... I really kind of want to branch out and diversify my, my prayer life. And then uh, a final thing that I struggle with is, um, is listening to God. And this unit that we're talking about, this sermon series, cl uh, Closer, this two-way communication, so far what I've been talking about has mostly been about me talking to God. But it's just not a prayer isn't just about that. It's about this two-way communication where God should also be speaking to us and talking to us. And I have difficulty setting aside time to listen to God. When I do that, I find that my mind just kind of drifts and wanders. Um, and I find that a lot of times it just doesn't feel like it's very productive. 
there have been times when I felt like God has spoken to me, um, but sometimes discerning his voice is a challenge as well. Um, so those are some of the things that I struggle with. Hopefully uh, you'll be able to share. Hopefully some of the things that I, I shared that kind of work for me or helped me will, will help you. And uh, hopefully we can uh, together kind of really reinforce each other as iron sharpens iron and help each other to uh, really kind of further our relationship with God through our prayer lives. Thank you very much. So it does seem to me like I would kind of be remiss if I didn't end our time when we talk about prayer in prayer. And so I just wanted to take some time, a little bit of time, just to kind of close our session here in prayer. Um, I'm just going to pray primarily about just kind of the situation that we're all going through with, with COVID-19. So let's just pray together. Dear Jesus, we just thank you that we can bring all of our requests to you. We thank you that you want to hear from us, that you want to listen to us, and you also want to change us through our prayer lives to become more like you. We pray that you'd help us to see the world, see people, see the situations that we go through through your eyes, and to trust in you in all circumstances. Right now, our congregation, our state, our nation, our world is going through a very difficult time, a very trying time with this global pandemic of COVID-19. We know ultimately, Lord, that our trust is in you, that our hope is in you, and that you are in control. We pray that you would grant our leaders wisdom on how to handle the situation, grant the medical personnel, the scientists wisdom to offer the best advice. We pray that you would ultimately deliver us from this. And even more importantly, we pray that through this, that people might come to know you and give their lives to you and draw closer to you. We pray that you would bless us as uh, we're going, or many people are going through struggles. People may be sick. People may be living in fear and worry. People may be grieving loss. People may be worried about their jobs. They may have lost their jobs. They might be under financial hardship. We release all these to you. We know that nothing is too small for you to care about and that you can handle all of it and that you care about all of it. We bring it all before you, Lord Jesus. We know that you are Lord over it and that you. we know that you have a purpose to offer us hope and to offer us solutions and to offer us a way through this, Lord. We know that we can't do this on our own. We recognize we're utterly dependent on you for all things, Lord. We thank you for what you are going to do through us and in us through this experience, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.